episode of Stadium Center. New props from the Bristol Pack, a new showdown challenge, and nine new stadiums to give you some serious inspiration. All that and more coming up on Stadium Center. Hey guys, and welcome to Stadium Center, your number one show on YouTube for all things and it'll be the show Stadium Creator. We're going to kick things off by checking out what's new since our last episode. First, we got a couple small tents and jersey barriers, and these could add a pop of color to your plazas. Next, we got a building and a few new signs that are just reskinned from the old ones. And finally, we got some new roads and highways. These are just lighter versions of the previous road set, but with some added decals. Not sure I'll ever use these, but you never know. Now, while there's not a lot of props I think that I'll use there, I can still probably find a use for one or two of them. Anyway, let's take a look at the finale of our last showdown. As you can see here, Big Ben Park is our winner, and they took the lead with 64% of the vote. And that's gonna lead us right into our next featured creator. All right, guys, for winning the minor league showdown, Texas Ag 75 is our featured creator this week. We're going to start off by taking a look at Braves Field. He says he loves the old classic style fields, and this stadium is a semi-recreation of a AAA park in Boston from back in the day. Even though it's a minor league recreation, it still holds over 30,000 fans, and he's built a really awesome city just beyond the outfield walls. He's also made really great use of the corners by putting in ball pins and utility areas that looks like they're used for a lot of maintenance and storage for the field. One thing you'll notice as we go through these parks is that he's a lot like me and he loves to build detailed cities outside of the stadium. It always gives your build some great detail and a whole new level of immersion. The second field of Texas eggs that we're going to check out has two different areas that are dedications. And I just happen to be lucky enough to have my very own spot in Tribute Park. Now this park has some very unique dimensions to it as the center field wall is extremely tall and it almost reminds me of center field at Chase Field in Arizona. Over in left we get to see the tribute that he has generously included me and my channel in. Thanks Tex! In the right field area, he has also included a fantastic canoe shop at the base of the waterfall leading in from the river. This definitely deserves a top 5 feature nomination. In foul territory, he snuck in some vendors and a hall of fame circle. Great use of the corner. This park looks great at night and I played a few home run derbies in it and I had a lot of fun trying to hit home runs off Phil's canoe shop. Just another great build by Texas Eggs and I'm flattered that I can be a part of this one. Next up, we're headed out to Sin City for another crazy Las Vegas stadium. This is Caesars Palace. Tex went all out on the theming in this one, and these are the builds I'd love to check out. Get an idea for a theme, and he absolutely crushed this one. As I said before, he loves building outside the park, and he really nailed the atmosphere here. Over in center, we can see a luxury box fit for Caesar himself. He's carried that architecture all the way around the stadium and really went the extra mile with all those wall pieces. If you're looking for a park that's outside the norm, be sure not to sleep on this park or any of the parks in his vault. This guy is a stadium building maniac and he's got a lot more to see than what I can just fit into this one segment. Another solid job here by Tex and let's take a look at one more park. We're going to wrap up this showcase in the Wild West as we check out Pecos River Field in Santa Fe, New Mexico. This is yet another great example of an immersive build and great attention to detail. By now, you should definitely have Tex on your radar and his stadiums in your vault. I love that Tex has a different setting for each of his stadiums, and I've really loved seeing all his parks in the Discord and in the Showdown competitions. He never stops the great parks from rolling in, and I honestly have a hard time keeping up with him as he seems to crank out gem after gem of stadiums. 
has given me a lot of ideas and inspiration for my own builds and has been a very positive member of the stadium creating community. I want to take this time to thank Tex and all of you guys for all the submissions and being part of this community. It really does mean a great deal to me and I love reading all the comments on my videos and yes, I do really read all of them. So with that, great job Tex on all these parts and now let's head back to the studio. Congratulations again, Texas Ags, for winning that showdown. But you know, as soon as the showdown ends, another one starts back up. Let's take a look at our next showdown challenge. All right, guys, so in case you missed the last episode or are new to the channel, we'll go over the rules for this challenge one more time. You had complete freedom in this one, except for the outfield wall distances and heights. Wall colors, the batter's eye, and foul territory walls could all be manipulated if you saw fit. We got 10 entries into this one, and one of those is including myself as I decided to get in on the competition after some encouragement from the guys on the Discord. So this is how the two divisions are going to stack up. We're going to start with the American division first, so let's see how you guys dealt with those walls. The first stadium we're going to look at is by the now defending champion, Texas Ag 75, and he brings us TA 75 Stadium Center. This stadium is located in San Antonio, Texas, holds a little over 37,000 fans and sits at an altitude of 699 feet. He's used some elevated plazas to see over those unusual wall heights and he's included a burger stand in center. In right field, we see a similar thing with elevated plazas and some vendors. And as usual, Texas has gone all out on building outside the stadium. This stadium looks really great at night, and I think it really reflects the style that we're used to seeing from Texas Eggs, which is fantastic. Can we get a repeat champion? We'll have to see. But I think with this stadium, he's got a pretty good shot. Our next entry is going old school, very old school, back to the 1800s. We got Newark 1800 by Tommy20701. Located in Newark, New Jersey, this only holds 6,800 fans and sits at an elevation of 230 feet. If I'm not mistaken, this is Tommy's first time on the channel and a showdown is a great way to show off his skills. In left field, he's used some custom bleachers to see over those walls and he's used the staircases to make a cool structure with a scoreboard on top. We also see the same kind of architecture carried throughout right field, and behind home plate we get some very old school looking bleacher sections. This park really hits the spot with the old school vibes using the green and brick texture. That's a go-to for me as well. Great job on your first entry, Tommy. I'm glad to have you as part of this channel. For our third American League entry, we're going to head out to the Wild West to Yuma, Arizona for the Reservoir by Sluggish Moth 953. This is a pretty cool concept build and it holds 21,000 fans and it has an elevation of just 141 feet. He's built a concourse around the entire stadium and it looks beautiful with a team store, a lot of vendors and even some picnic seating. I love the use of different levels and how he tucked that scoreboard right above the short wall. Right field has a beautiful plaza and the curved staircase is a thing to behold, very clean. Behind the stands you get a great view of the reservoir and a fun place for kids to hang out. I love desert builds and he pulled this off really nicely even with the lacking plants that we would see in the desert. Flip the lights on and this stadium really shines. I played a few home run derbies in it and there are a lot of fun targets and different levels to try and aim for. Great job with this one sluggish moth. Now let's check out our next entry. We don't have to travel too far for this next one as we're going to stay in Arizona but head on down to Tucson for the Bullpen SC1 by Pops2566. This park holds around 30,000 fans and sits at an elevation of 990, so the ball will carry slightly more than the last stadiums we took a peek at. In left, Pops has built his own Western Metal Supply style building and used a three layer upper deck to get around those walls. Over in center, we get four great party decks and a giant scoreboard just above the batter's eye. The right corner has been contoured around some warehouse buildings and the rooftops have been repurposed into some awesome places to catch the game from. We can see the high rise out in right field, which would be my dream to have a place like that looking into a ballpark. This stadium looks like it'd be an awesome place to catch a game with a really fun atmosphere. Really nice job on this one, Pops, and I believe this is also his first time ever submitting a stadium to the channel. 
We're going to wrap up the American League with a critter we've seen many times who is known for his very unique concepts, and this park is no different. This is History Field Museum by Chris A.T. Johnson. This park is very cool as it's going to take us through time, so let's get started. Starting in left, you can make a splash in the gene pool. Then moving on into the left field area, we've got the dinosaurs with that volcano you can hit a home run into. Next, center field represents the BC area with that hotel pyramid and the banner's eye. And just after that, we move on to the New World, followed by the Westward Trails in the Frontier era. I'm loving this concept so far, and we're going to wrap this up with the baseball area, because what else could you call it? I love looking at Chris's parks because he has such unique ideas, and I'm always curious with what he's going to come up with next, and he never disappoints. Pretty fun way to wrap up the American League, and just a reminder, voting is live, so head on over to the community page to vote for your favorite. And while you do that, before we check out the National League, we'll take a peek at three random parks I found at this episode's edition of Inside the Vault. The first stadium that I came across is Doll Park Renegades, which looks like it's probably used for a custom franchise for the Dallas Renegades. This park holds 41,000 fans and has some cool architectural features, including this one behind home plate and suites running all the way across the top level. Both corners have zones for parties and families, but the main feature of this park has got to be the really cool scoreboard behind the batter's eye. I really like how they use the skyscraper as just part of the structure in the stadium and the picnic zones with windows to see into the game down below. There's also some cool targets in left field including a glove and pool, but I think they're too far to hit. Taking a look at night, we can see those suites running all the way across the top and they did a really nice job with the lighting. If you're looking for a park in Dallas, this might be a pretty good option for you. Our next stadium up is a mid-century build as we take a look at Oak and Brick Park V2. At first glance, this looks like a really big park, but it only holds about 23,000 fans, making this park great for both minor league teams or a major league expansion team, and I really like the horseshoe design. The field has great views of the downtown area beyond left field while upping the seating with two decks in right field. I really like the smaller section of seating in left field and the old school scoreboard. Right field has a really clean design and I love how they replaced some of the texture with the brick. The right corner has a beautiful plaza and even has a restaurant with a couple decks of rooftop seating to catch the game from. I really like how this park looks at night and it's realistic but still one of a kind design. There's also something about the name Oak and Brick Park too that just sums it up perfectly. It's definitely awesome to see this kind of thing in the vault instead of Costco for the 800th time. Now, if you're a fan of my buddy Phil's channel, Studio 44, then you've probably already seen this park, but I also wanted to show it off too. This is Whataburger Park, and if you're not sure who Phil at Studio 44 is, go check out his channel after this episode as he also shows off great stadiums from MLB The Show as well. Oddly enough, we both ran across this park while recording, so we must have been online about the same time. I'm just glad we found this one before Hattie's RTTS glitch glitched this one out of existence. Behind home plate, we have some camera wells and some covered dugouts, which I don't think I've seen roofs over them before. There's also limited seating down the lines and behind home plate, as this is a smaller city build. But we still get an awesome elevated bleacher section above the team store and some vendors in left. The batter's eye area looks great, and the rock work is amazing with the foliage woven in between. In right field, we get shades of San Francisco as putting one over the bleachers is going to get you a splash landing. The features outside the stadium are pretty cool as well. I love the cows grazing the outfield and the concert that's going on just behind that right field wall. There's also a big sports complex just outside a hospital, and you get a feeling of being in a real city in this park. I always really love doing these smaller builds because I feel that you can just get a different level of creativity that you can't with the bigger stadiums. But for now, we're going to head back on to the showdown, and we're going to take a look at the National League. Our first entry into the National League is by somebody who I think that we all know by now. This is Stadium Center Memorial Field by Murph075. We always expect great things from him, so let's check this one out. Starting down the line, we have some custom sections with bleachers, and he's also used a Western Metal Style Supply building on that left field wall. Heading towards center, he's got a multi-level plaza with some fountains and a very cool garden area. 
He's continued the layering style on right for a very clean and complex concourse. Right field reflects the same balcony style seating we saw on left, but with a huge concourse and plaza above the roof, and that connects to the upper decks. This is another awesome build by Murph, and he's another guy whose stadiums I'm always excited to check out when I receive a submission from him. Awesome job again, Murph. Now let's check out the next entry. Next up is an entry from the first ever showdown champion. This is Whalen Corp Coliseum by Jedi Yank. This park sits at a low elevation of just 100 feet and is located in Sewell City, USA. Thanks, Jedi. The right field corner hosts a kid's ballpark and two levels of seating, including a restaurant below the stands with windows built into the wall to check out the game from. Center field has a great skyline behind the stands and I really like the suites between the upper deck and bleachers. He's even included vendors behind the bleachers for detail. No spots missed here. As you'd expect from these guys, these parks all look fantastic at night, and the glowing video board in center is a pretty cool backdrop over the batter's eye. Nice job on this one, Jedi. Now let's check out an entry from another YouTube Stadium Showcaser. This next entry comes from none other than Phil over at Studio 44. It's located in his hometown of Rochester, New York, and holds around 30,000 fans. And at an elevation of 3,000 feet, the ball will carry pretty well here. He's gone for a very unique look in this park and has built a lot of custom structures for his features and his concourses. My favorite being the architecture on this ramp above the batter's eye. In right, we get a huge scoreboard above the fountains and some stacked luxury suites. This park looks awesome at night and it makes me want to try and build some custom architecture. Again, if you haven't found Phil's channel yet, Studio 44, be sure to check him out as he shows off stadiums too and he posts a lot more frequently than I do. Our next creation comes from somebody who we've seen on this channel quite a bit before. This is Stadium Center Plaza by Sandman Dan. Located in Bristol, Connecticut, this stadium holds 38,500 fans and sits at an elevation of 2,800 feet. From left field to center, he's built a great two-level concourse and the curved balconies give an illusion of almost having an overhang in center field. He's also replicated my channel's logo and I just might have to steal that. Right field looks like a place to have a really fun time at as he's got several party decks and even some seating down below to try and catch some home runs from. He's also made good use of those new barriers lining the wall. It's been a while since we've been able to showcase a Sandman Dan build, but I'm glad we got another one and this one is fantastic. We got one more left to look at in the showdown and then be sure to vote on the community page. Next up is a creator I'm thinking you're probably all familiar with. This is Riverside Park by me, Sewell21. After some encouragement from the guys in the Discord, I created this entry into my own showdown. For my build, I really wanted to tie in those walls into my park features and try not to add any extra walls around them if I could help it. I think it turned out pretty decent, so let's take a look at what I came up with. Left field has a city park above it and a train that comes through a tunnel that gets a view of the game as it passes through. If you cross over the tunnel, you can hang out on the section that I call the wedge, or maybe you're just heading home to your apartment that has a view of the ballpark. If you look over the river, you can see the trains heading to the station along the cliffside city on the other side, and in front of that is a small playground area for kids to hang out at. And there's also a couple of restaurants along the boardwalk where you can grab a bite to eat and catch the game for a few innings. There's also a lookout leading from the stands. I had a lot of fun with this challenge, and I hope you guys enjoyed this style of showdown whether you participated or just decided to check out the competition. Our next showdown challenge is a Discord exclusive, so if you want to get out in the action, be sure to click the invitation in the link in the description. Be sure to head to the community page to vote for both your favorite parks in the American and National League division as well. And with that, let's get to everyone's favorite segment, Stadiums That Inspire.
All right, guys, time for stadiums that inspire. We're going to kick things off with Big Ben Stadium by Danboy V3. This is Danboy's first stadium we've seen on this channel, and it's a really good one, so let's get into it. This stadium has a super clean build, and I had a really good time checking this one out. It holds 40,000 fans and sits at 1,800 feet. Left field starts off with a nice double level plaza, and the concourse continues with a restaurant running in front of a few small sections of bleachers. The right field corner features a team shop and a couple bridges that provide openings to get a good look at the surrounding rock formations. But the best part of this park is this awesome batter's eye in center field with a great backdrop and features fountains and a video board. This earns our first top five feature nominee. Dan Boy really nailed the desert feeling in this park, and I wish we'd see a lot more desert parks. The stadium is also lit up very well, and after checking out this one, I can't wait to check out the other park that he has submitted. Great work on this one, Dan. Let's head on out to Illinois for Chicago Yard by Memerson25. This stadium holds a whopping 52,000 fans and sits at Chicago's actual elevation of 597 feet. Behind home plate is not your typical pack of in seating as there's very cool greenery areas behind the dugouts. There's pretty identical plazas in the corners with vendors and fountains, and above those are some patio areas at the base of high rises with more vendors and a few restaurants. And once again, we get a really nice batter side with an overgrown look and theme for the White Sox, earning our second top five nomination. The last part of the park is beyond the right field wall, which also mirrors the left field concourse, but also provides parking for the stadium. This was an awesome Chicago build, and it really does make me miss living back there. They did a great job blending in the high rises, and I think the White Sox should take some notes from this park when they're building their new design. Great job, Emerson. I really enjoyed this one. All right, grab a coat because we're heading up to Alaska for Juno Complex by Jude 3 Cardinal. This looks like a nice expansion team concept stadium and holds just shy of 45,000 fans and sits at max elevation of 5279. We get some more great features behind home plate, including an area with some pine trees just below the video board. They've built an awesome looking left field with custom upper deck bleachers and a cool wall full of advertisements and scoreboards. The center field concourse looks really clean and I love the stands hanging over the waterfalls. Right field has a nice double deck setup and they blend it in the office buildings perfectly and the corner has a nice plaza with a fountain and a team store. This park looks really nice at night and would make for a great stadium for an expansion team in franchise or an online play too. Keep up the good work, Jude, and I hope you'll send me more parks in the future. Time to grab your sunblock because we're headed to Nevada for the Las Vegas Coliseum by Fat Tat Dad. This is another mega park holding over 53,000 fans. Right away, left field looks great with some covered sections and standing room behind the wall. In center field, there's some advertising next to a video board of the restaurant in the background. And on the opposite side, there's a playground for the younger fans to play at and some more covered seating next to the waterfall. They've also made a really clean looking double ball pin with two heights like the one we see at Camden Yards. We've been seeing a lot of Vegas stadiums with the A's relocation looming, and this is another fantastic one. Great job on this one, Fat Tad Dad, and I know I got a few entries from you lined up. Now it's time to mix things up and head out to Darewood, Maryland for Montgomery Ballpark by Alex Sly 22. This is a medium sized build and holds a bit over 23,000 fans and sits at a realistic elevation of 1221. Right away, Alex has shaken some things up with some covered areas down the foul ball lines. He's got a huge scoreboard in front of the Delta Sky seats and a nice plaza coming from the food stands. The batter's eye backdrop looks great with multiple kinds of trees, and it always looks more realistic when you vary the heights and rotations like they've done here. Right field also has a huge scoreboard, and the plants between the walls and stands are a great filler for those dead spots. Nice work on this park, Alex. I love the smaller feel on this one. All right, now let's cross the country to California, and I love the name of this one. This is Old Harbor Street Ballpark by me32699. The name alone actually gave me an idea for a park. I'll have to live stream a build again soon. Located in South City, California, this park holds about 29,000 fans and sits at a low elevation of just 62 feet, so you're going to have to earn every foot of those home runs. 
Left field looks great with custom ball pins at the turn, and the concourse is set up very nicely with vendors as soon as you walk in through those gates. There's even a whiffle ball field for the kids to play at too. Here we get to actually see Harbor Street, and it looks like California put their own spin on Wrigley Field. I love that mashup concept. They also did a great job working with this corner, and this park just has an awesome vibe throughout the whole thing. This is another park that gave me a lot of inspiration and some fresh ideas. I also feel like this would be the major league park from a team that you get promoted to if my Willie Mays park was the minor league affiliate. Great job on this park, and please send me some more if you got them. Next is OQ Field by Frostman Mix 1616. He told me this is a park if Oakland got a whole new team and a new stadium. OQ Field holds 42,000 fans and sits at a low elevation of 372 feet. This is way better than the current Ace Park, so let's get started. Down the lines, we get some table seating in front of the main stands, which is a cool idea. And in left, we get a private area with some batting cages, playgrounds, and even some cabanas to relax in. They use the San Fran batter's eye and continue the lounge seating on both sides on elevated plazas. Over and right, it's party time with a pool and some grassy areas to try and grab some home runs from. I always think it's cool when you guys come up with cool concepts like this one where the A's relocated and Oakland got a whole new team, which, let's be honest, Oakland deserves a lot better than the current organization they have there. Nice job on this one, Frostman, and I think I have one or two more from you, and I love the team name Earthquakes for Oakland. Just the name on this submission had me intrigued. This is another first time around this channel, and it's Pine Cliff Park by Danny Dolich. Located in Colorado Springs, you'll be crushing home runs in this mile-high park to all 34,000 fans and possibly into that mountain backdrop. Left field looks really nice with the fountains, and that scoreboard is the perfect choice to sit alongside the cliff face. Over and right, they blended the scoreboard nicely on those extended restaurants above the outfield bleachers. This is another park where they absolutely nailed the aesthetic for the setting they chose, and I'm a big fan of the rock work they've done in the background. Great work on this one, Double D, and I'm excited to check out all the other parks that you've sent me. Next is River Falls Basin by Mo2179, and it's a user I've been meaning to get to. I'm sorry that it took so long, Mo. This park is inspired by Two Clocks' Otter Creek field from previous versions of the show, and he wanted to create a park with a river-fed waterfall and a visible drawbridge in the distance. And I'd have to say he absolutely nailed it here. So much so that I'm giving it a top 5 nomination for such an incredible blending of those props. Beautiful skyline as well. Right field has an awesome concourse and a couple home run targets to aim for too. I also love the rooftop area with fans watching from the building's patio area. That would be the dream once again for me to have a view into a field. I love the backdrop in this one and it's awesome how the bridge lines up so perfect with the batter's eye. That would definitely be one of the coolest entrances into a baseball stadium. Great job on this one, Mo, and I appreciate you being a very active member on the Discord and hanging out with us. All right, next we got a park from another member who's always fun to chat with on the Discord and share parks with. This is Say Hey Park at Bay Point by Camo Brew 20. Located in San Francisco, if you couldn't tell by the name or the Golden Gate Bridge, this park holds 24,000 fans and sits at just 100 feet. Left field has a scoreboard, and I like the hit it here sign and the say hey lettering just below it. Right field has a few restaurants in the deck, but the coolest park has got to be that you can paddle your canoe below the deck to watch the game through the outfield wall. I know Phil definitely approves of this feature. Just a quick reminder, if you want to submit a park for a chance to see your creation on the channel, you can fill out the form in the description below. Nice job on this one, Camo Brew, and I know I got two more of yours to check out in the queue. All right, let's head north to Missoula, Montana for Xfinity Stadium by That Boy Roy. At an elevation of 3209 and holding 45,000 fans, this is going to be an awesome park to wrap up this episode of Stadiums That Inspire. Left field starts off with a fountain and a gorilla statue and has an upper concourse featuring bathrooms and a bar to get a drink at. And from there, you can head down the escalators to check out the Hall of Fame. Right field has a ton of seating to catch some moonshots from and some vendors above, but the best part of this park is the absolutely scenic batter's eye area featuring fountains, vendors, and the Cincinnati home run stacks. He also said the pride flags represent his World Series titles for the Montana Bruins in his franchise. Fantastic work on this one, Roy, and I have another one of yours ready to check out. Now let's wrap up Stadiums That Inspire with the top five features from this episode. Yeah. 
Starting off at number five is the Batter's Eye from Chicago Yard by Meverson25. It's right on theme with the White Sox, and I love the overgrown look with the bushes. It's definitely an awesome backdrop during gameplay and home run derbies. Next at number four, we have the Outfield Concourse from River Basin Falls by Mo2179. With everything from waterfalls and bridges over the river to enter the stadium, he shows us that he can blend props to make some pretty awesome features. Great job, Mo. In the middle spot, how can you not appreciate a canoe rental shop in a major league stadium? This one is dedicated to Phil at Studio 44, and I love that he has racks of canoes ready to be rented as well as launching them into a fountain. Where do I sign up? Coming in at number two is the Batter's Eye Waterfall Concourse from Big Bend Stadium. The waterfalls blended into the desert setting make for an awesome oasis backdrop, and this whole area just brings the whole concept of the stadium together beautifully. Yeah. And coming in at the top spot is the Centerfield Falls and Plaza area from Xfinity Stadium by Dad Boy Roy. With everything from splash shots to home run stacks, to party deck seating, and a beautiful skyline of buildings, this came together nicely to earn the top feature in this week's episode. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this episode of Stadium Center. And if you made it this far, I've got a special code for you to use in my merch shop. If you use code PREMIER at checkout, you'll get 20% off your entire order. Thanks again for stopping by, and I hope to see you in the next one.